Hello, my name is Tommy Ray. I work for Trimec, a SOLIDWORKS reseller. Today we're going to take a look at the overview of the capabilities of SOLIDWORKS routing and in introducing you to the software. So let's get started. SOLIDWORKS routing is basically broken down into three main categories. You have piping, tubing, and electrical. The electrical can be electrical conduit, ribbon cables, flex cables, things like that, along with even user-defined rectangular and circular cross-sections for HVAC systems. Accessing SOLIDWORKS routing is as simple as going into your SOLIDWORKS interface and the add-ins and actually turning on or checking the box beside SOLIDWORKS routings. Once the add-in has been activated, it's easy to access the SOLIDWORKS routing component pane. If you look at your options, you can actually go into the routing where all your settings are located. And then under the options for routing, you're also going to find the access to the routing library. This is where you're going to go and click and be able to select the type of pipes that you're using or the types of tubing. Uh, where the libraries are at that's going to locate these. And there's also a wizard here that allows you to build a new component. Uh, with the connection points as well. Once your libraries have been set and your parts have been added for your routing, it's now time to look at where we can access these components and that's going to be in your task pane in your design library. And as you can see, you have a routing column or routing uh, folder there now that allows you access to the different types of routing that you have, the different parts that are available, uh, everything from tanks to flanges to fittings of almost any type. And of course, this is just a starting library that gives you access to the ability to create new libraries. Now that we've got all this set up, let's open up a piping platform that we can take a look at. And the first thing we kind of want to look at here is the display states that we can set up. This is a display state of just a tank and the pump and this little cabinet that's in front. Uh, you can use display states to change and to access certain areas only without having to um, open up the whole thing. Now you notice we're actually using our task pane to drag and drop a flange. This is configuration specific so we can actually use a configuration for this flange. It opens up our property manager, gives us the ability to go in and check and pick from our libraries of pipes and of different types of elbows that we're going to use in this particular one, coverings and things like that. So as we check that, uh, it's asking us to save this route and we're going to save it. But you'll see that it automatically starts a pipe route. Now this is a 3D sketch. Uh, and we can go in uh, once we get that 3D sketch started and we can draw off of that sketch, uh, of course using a tab key to change the planes. Uh, we can also uh, take this back up a notch and start another sketch at the top. Um, we can delete this one out. And then we're going to go back and put a flange on the top of the tank where we're going to run this pipe to. And another drag and drop. This time it doesn't recognize the size of the pipe, so we actually have to go in and actually choose all configurations. And then be able to pick that 4 inch pipe and the schedule that we're trying to use. Once that's selected, we're already in the route, so it's already giving us the uh, stub there. So we want to simply go in now and allow it to uh, auto route between those two points. So if we just right click on that pipe and select the auto route option, click the two points at the end of the stubs, and it will automatically route this for us. Now we have the ability in our orthogonal change here to change that orthogonal view to different uh, orientations of the pipe. And of course we, we kind of like it like that. Even though there's an interference, we can still move that 3D sketch around. And we even have the ability to go in and add a dimension to that uh, to keep it a certain distance off of that cabinet. So if we just use our smart dimension and select the top face, uh, we can put in a 5 inch uh, dimension there to keep it off of that five inches. So just like that we've created a route and we can get out of it. This is just editing a component or an assembly inside SOLIDWORKS. And you'll notice the elbows were all put in place and everything is good to go. Even after we completed the route we can still go back into that and edit the route that we just created and be able to go back and drag and drop other components 
uh, onto that route. The route sketch is still active. We can now just go in and simply drag and drop some type of valve. Uh, it resizes automatically based off of the configurations and based off of the pipe size. Uh, we can then pick and choose the schedule that we want to use, the size of the pipe and the schedule. Uh, and we could even take it down and not have a uh, length of pipe there. It can be mounted rec directly on top of that flange. Uh, and you can see I'm still in that process. This time I'm not going to set that up. Uh, but just dragging and dropping that in there will actually cut that pipe at those locations. Uh, and we're going to see that because once I've gotten this in place, I'm going to open up this assembly just of the pipe route. And you're going to be able to see uh, that this is what we've got. The flanges are there and each section of pipe is separate. So if we did a bill of material there, we would have a length of pipe there at that length plus all the elbows. Uh, and all the components that we've used to drag in. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of SOLIDWORKS routing. Uh, my name is Tommy Ray with Trimec. Thanks for watching.